Hello, and welcome to another imperfect video of my imperfect writer's diary. Today is September 10th, 2024. And this is how I began my day. 6.41 AM, clear skies, pleasant temperature, no winds. I feel as if I can hear the thrum of traffic in the distance, like the distant sound of surf. I slept in until just after 6 AM again, the first class of the Artist Way study group was great last night. And as usual, it took me a while to wind down. So I didn't get right to bed until about 11 p.m., which is very late for me. But I did awake easily and naturally at 6.05. I had set up the coffee machine, so coffee was ready. But I was so enamored of the cool, calm air outside and the distant blush of peach in the east that I just had to stand on the balcony and do a few hip-related qigong not to say hippie, related qigong exercises while I indulged in my first cup of coffee. So you see why I was a little late getting here. In any case, I did do the sudden fiction right off the bat, meaning I opened a desktop LibreOffice file, enlarged it to 200% and wrote it without my glasses on. Somehow that feels very primal. <laughs> It turned out to be more of an exploration of a childhood memory than a fi fictional nugget for the Saigon Diaries, but here it is. Avery sat up in bed, sweating profusely. The air conditioner must have broken again. She, it had never been so hot in Korea or Taiwan. In fact, Taiwan had been downright cold sometimes. She threw off the blanket she had slept with. It was a pink nylon fluffy thing, but it was not heavy. The top side was a mosaic of colors on a satiny material. Each of the kids had one. When they lived in Korea, her mom had discovered that people there slept on folding mats called yos and proceeded to buy one for everyone except Susie, who was still in a crib. But honestly, she could have had her own yo back then. They were only a few inches thick, so even if she'd rolled off, she would have been okay. Of course, then she would have couldn't she could have roamed the house at will, scuttling around on all fours. Avery shuddered and wiped her brow. No, it was better to have kept Susie in a well-defined crib space. In fact, she wished she were still in a crib, but well, five years old was probably too old for that. So that was my little foray into it, the imagination. And again, a little bit of memory. So I, you can't see it, but I wrote, there's two different spellings of Avery, ending with a Y and ending with an IE. I have a notion that Mrs. Monique Forrester, loosely modeled on my mom, has a thing for Irish fairy tales, and so use this anachronistic spelling. What about Avery to mimic fairy as an F-A-R-I-E? I thought of that, but it's just so darn complicated. Perhaps Mr. Forrester objected to so many vowels in a simple name, and they comp um, compromise with an I-E instead of a Y at the end, but kept the beginning of the name, just a simple A, so Avery. A-V-E-R-I-E. So yesterday I wrestled with ages in middle school versus junior high. Today I'm tussling with vowels. Is this a typical right of life of a writer? Why is everything so complicated in my world? Well, that's a good cue to take a few minutes. Okay, let's be honest. It takes me 20 minutes at least to delve into the handwritten morning pages. That ought to sort me out for sure. So I stopped there at 7, 7, 16 16 minutes. Well, that's only because I started the morning pages a little earlier when I had to stand up for a few minutes. My back had been more than a little sore recently, and it's so important not to power through. The idea of no pain, no gain really was a terrible one perpetrated upon poor people of this earth. If your back hurts, stand up. I'm saying this to myself because yesterday I definitely pushed it. Speaking of such things, today is day two of my six weeks or 42 days of my version of the Artist's Way Writing Challenge, which includes both spending time with my manuscript, The Saigon Diaries, in the mornings, as well as the work right here. What are you, crazy, I'm thinking to myself? Yes, I definitely am. But as I said in my presentation yesterday, it's okay to aim high and then have a little, maybe a ginormous, <laughs> aim high with a un ginormous, totally unrealistic goal, as long as you have a middling and a ho-hum markers that you can land on without feeling too badly about yourself. In writing out my three longhand morning pages, I realized it would be kind, helpful, and wise to transcribe the entry I wrote longhand during our class time together last night. One class member had said it was very helpful to hear how I tackled thinking about the challenges ahead of us. 
Note, in my presentation, I included a photo of myself sprawled out on the ground, illustrating that I am a participant in this, just like them. I'm a facilitator of the process, but not the teacher of the text, nor the author of the text. Of course, that's Julia Cameron. All right, so here it goes. Let me transcribe. Note, I thought I'd be working on my middle grade novel right now, and I just want to note that because every time I wonder why I didn't get the manuscript done in years past, I ought to remind myself it's because I have chosen, chosen to do other things, which is good and okay and right, but it's worth remembering that difference. It, it's not poor, poor, pitiful me. It's that I had a choice. I had agency. Well, okay, except for the chronic fatigue condition I had and then long COVID fogginess, which I suspect has crept around my ankles and brain for quite some time. So anyway, this is also my writing. I really want to share this here, capture it before it gets lost in my big pile of illegible notebooks. So here goes. Essay from 9924 written during the 20 minute quiet writing time of class number one of the study of the artist's way. The prompt was, where are you right now in relation to the creative life and or how do you intend to tackle all the bits of the artist's way? Morning pages, artist date, meditative walks, tasks. Ugh, how will I do all this? Well, hello, here we are on the precipice of a six week commitment. I'm quite curious how the days will play out since October and November, I mean, sorry, September and October are some of my busiest months, generally speaking. Still, I feel optimistic that I'll be able to make my focus on the many, uh, keep my focus on the many tasks and activities. One, morning pages. Here's my plan. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'll be doing my writing work, my writing morning sessions projected to last from the time I get up to about 8.30 or 9 a.m. or two, and a half, two, two to two and a half hours, whichever comes first. So I'll tackle the morning pages right after I do my sudden fictions. At this point, they're just four or five sentences, so that shouldn't take too long. Just enough time to get the coffee to kick in. On Wednesdays and Fridays, I have to leave out the house early, so I'll hop right on to the morning pages on those days. Note, having a coffee pot with a timer is key to having my morning writing sessions go well. I love to put around the kitchen. I mean, I love, love, love it. And if the coffee's already brewed, I can resist the pull to putter and get to my desk quickly. I can use my puttering time later as a reward for myself when I'm done. It really works out quite nicely that way. Two, the artist date. I really need to dig in here and think about this. I think Friday afternoons will have to be the day, although I do need a good run or workout then too. Maybe I can do them back to back or vice versa, just back to back. And what about those three Fridays coming up which I have to work at the town park or I'm doing a Vietnam presentation? Well, maybe I can squeeze something in on another afternoon, maybe even Saturday on those weeks. Let's see, well, Meanwhile, let me look up some artist date ideas, go to a local artist supply boutique, visit a local museum with a sketchbook, do some embroidery or needlework. That seems very strange, but somehow I feel drawn to it. Oh gosh, yeah, because this is hard. What else? See a film about an artist? Ooh, maybe I'll rewatch that movie on Beatrix Potter. That was so nurturing and inspiring. And I'm not sure why, but I keep seeing myself going to a botanical garden and drawing a plant that has one of those labeling signs on it, which is not I, I didn't put this in here, but I do nature journaling, so it's not that weird. It's how writing is, your journal. Sometimes you write things you don't understand. Anyway, I'm out of ideas now, but I feel certain that in the reading of The Artist's Way, or, or as I go on dates, I'll think of other outings that I could do, that my inner artist child would like to do. Ooh, I just thought of something inspired by my terrible handwriting tonight. Remember, this was written first in my spiral notebooks. I just heard someone saying that they were going to make more time for lettering. I'd like to learn some lettering or at least co calligraphy. Now for the meditative walks. I realize now that the concept of a 20 minute meditative walk dovetails perfectly with my recent desire to spend more time in the woods out back. It takes about 20 minutes to walk to the end of the path and then back. So I could do that at least once and maybe twice during these busy months. As far as the tasks, I will devote a portion of my Saturday work days to them, but I'll need to choose them ahead of time, which brings me to the question of when am I going to do the reading of the chapters, rereading, but still need some time to, to settle in and look at the details of each chapter. So I need to sit down and calendar all these things out. Calendaring, it's important. So that's my essay from last night. It's not even 8 a.m., so I have a bit more time to dive into the Saigon Diaries. What will it be today? 
751. 804. Honestly, I'm feeling the need for sustenance. I was feeling the need for sustenance and went and warmed up some waffles, made a rooibos latte, used the restroom, and now suddenly it's 805. See, the time just disappears. 8.30. Boy, I just reviewed my notes from the slides for what seems like the millionth time. Maybe it's post-snack brain fog, but while I clarified a few details and discovered that at least for today, it seems like the best encapsulation of the story. Other than that, I feel like I'm foundering again. Tracked. Well, but this is the encapsulation of the story. The if and so but method of defining a character, thanks to Melanie Meehan from 10 years ago. Yikes. So if Avery Forrester wants to be close to her father and find out what's going on in Saigon, she needs to get his attention. But he's extremely stressed about the situation and can't tell her top secret information anyway. So she turns to the school librarian who advises her to take notes a la Anne Frank and the Harry the Spy. And when her father sees her interest and gives her a, written diary, a diary written in Vietnamese, she turns to a local boy to translate the journal. Helping them form a relationship and landing, leading them both to the realization that the war is much more complex than they'd ever imagined, thus igniting their desire to find, share their findings with the world. The question is, how can they get this info out of Saigon? Remember, until Dan Da Nang fell, no one realized the country was going to pieces. So thoughts of evacuation really weren't top of mind. Okay, obviously I'm in need of a break. My middle grade novel hopes are once again dashed for today. I must reach for the courage I need and try not to read anything about the many award-winning authors I know, the ones who get novels done as if they're sweeping the stairs. 8.34 a.m. Thanks for joining me. I hope that if you keep a writer's diary or any sort of diary, you do it with a light heart and not worry too much about how things are going in the big scheme of things. Keep at it. And until next time, take care.